All right, welcome back to Faith, Wisdom, and Martyrdom. Saint study and our this morning readings. So good morning and welcome back to our Faith, Wisdom, and Martyrdom study. Today, we'll delve into the inspiring lives of Saint Titus, Saint Theodora, and Saints Amphimios and Odysseus. Alongside profound passages from Isaiah, Genesis, and Proverbs, join us as we uncover timeless lessons of courage, divine guidance, and the enduring legacy of faith in the face of adversity. Let's embark on this journey of spiritual enrichment together, in the name of Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now we're going to ask the Lord. And now we're going to ask the Lord to shine into our hearts. So let me master the pure light of your divine knowledge. And note up the eyes of our mind that we may understand your teachings in the scriptures. Help us to apply what we learn so after having conquered simple desires. We may pursue a spiritual way of life, thinking and doing all the things that are pleasing to you. Your Christ, your God, you are light, and to you, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, the sages. Amen. Good morning. Welcome back. The Lord is our shepherd. Great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is true in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. It's my pleasure, it's my pleasure to bring you all God's word each and every day. So we'll start out with our saint study. We'll get our screen shared over and get right into it this morning. Thank you all again for following. So this morning, our saints. So we're going to start out by talking about Titus, the wonder worker. And like I have the last few studies, I was able to find a little more on the saints. So St. Titus, the wonder worker. So St. So Saint Titus, it's also known as St. Titus of Borstra, was renowned wonder worker and bishop of, Bo of Bostra in Arabia. He lived in the fourth century and is honored and remembered for his miracles and spiritual teachings. His piety, humility, and dedication to spreading the Christian faith especially in areas where paganism was prevailing, continue to inspire all believers today in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our next saint, Theodora, the Virgin Martyr of Palestine. So Saint Theodora was a Christian virgin martyr who lived in Palestine during the persecution of Christians under the Roman Emperor Diclinian. In the fourth century, she bravely endured torture and martyrdom for her faith, refusing to renounce Christianity despite severe trials. She honored, she is honored for her steadfastness and commitment to Christ. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. And Amphimios and Adesios, the martyrs of Lysa. So Saint Amphimios and Adesios were Christian martyrs who lived in Lysa, an ancient region in Asian Minor, which today is known as modern-day Turkey. They were soldiers in the Roman army who converted to Christianity and were martyred for their faith during the persecutions of the third century. The Orthodox Church celebrates their courage and loyalty to Christ in the face of persecution. These saints are all remembered on April 2nd as part of the Orthodox Church calendar of saints, which honors the lives and contributions of various saints throughout the year. Their commemoration reminds us of the faithfulness, courage, and sacrifice of early Christians who stood firm in their beliefs, even at the cost of their lives. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So our first reading this morning will come from Isaiah chapter 9. We'll get over to our readings. We'll start out right here in Isaiah chapter 9. We'll end in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 4. We'll get zoomed in. Name the Father, Son. And the Holy Spirit. And it says, All the people will know Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, who say in pride and arrogance of heart, The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild the hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. Therefore, the Lord shall set up the adversaries arisen against him and spur his enemies on. The Syrians before the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with an open mouth. For all, for all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For the people do not turn to him who strikes them, nor do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore, the Lord will cut off head and tail from Israel, palm branch and bulrush in one day. The elder and honorable 
he is in the head. The prophet who teaches lies, he is the tell. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. And those who are led by them are destroyed. Therefore, the Lord will have no joy in their young men. Nor have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is a hypocrite and evildoer. And every mouth speaks folly. For all his anger is not turned away. But his hand is stretched out still. For the wickedness burns as a fire. It shall devour the briars and thorns. And kindle the thickets of the forest. They shall mount up like rising smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts. And the land is burned up. And the people shall be as fuel for the fire. A man shall man, and no man shall spare his brother. And he shall snatch on the right hand, be hungry. He shall devour on the left hand and not be satisfied. Every man shall eat the flesh of his own arm. Men shall devour Ephraim and Ephraim the son. Today they shall be against Judah, for all his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees, who write misfortune, which they have prescribed to rob the needy of justice. And to take what is right from the poor of my people. That widows may be their prey. And that they may rob the fatherless. What will you do in the day of punishment? And the desolation which will come from afar. To whom you will flee for help. And where will you leave your glory? Without me they shall bow down among the prisoners. And they shall fall among the slain. For all this. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. In the, name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, starting out in our readings here in Isaiah, the passage is part of Isaiah's prophecy concerning Israel's rebellion against God and the consequences they will all face. It also highlights the importance of obedience to God's commandments and the consequences of disobedience. It also improvises God's justice and righteousness in dealing with sin. Verse 10, right? So verse 10, it said, The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. So the reference of rebuilding with hewn stones and planting, and planting pleasant vineyards parallels Israel's attempt to rebuild and prosper through their efforts, ignoring God's commands. To understand verse 10, right? So the understanding of verse 10, it speaks of pride and arrogance, right? Israel boasts of their strength and achievements, neg neglecting to acknowledge God's sovereignty and guidance. Let's look at verse 18. So verse 18 says, For the wickedness burns as fire, it shall devour the briars and thorns and kindle the thickets of the forest. They shall mount up like rising smoke. The imagery of the fire devouring the briars and thorns is representing God's judgment on the wicked and all those who are unrepented in their sins. It also depicts the judgment that will come upon the ungodly with fire devouring the thorns and briars symbolizing divine punishment. We got into Isaiah chapter 10, the first the first four verses, right? So let's look at the first two verses, right? Woe to those who decree unrighteous decrees, who write misfortune, which they have prescribed to rob the needy of justice, and take what is right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey, and that they may rob the fatherless. Who issues oppressive decrees? Right? This refers to unjust rulers and leaders who exploit those that are vulnerable, who deprive people with low incomes of their rights. It refers to those in power who deny justice and oppress the weak. In verses 3 and 4, what will you do in the day of punishment and the desolation which will come from afar? To whom will you flee for help? And where will you leave your glory? Without me, they, sh they shall bow down among the prisoners, and they shall fall among the slain. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is, sh is stretched out still. The verses there are highlighting the accountability of leaders before God for their actions, especially regarding their treatment of all those who are marginalized and who are disadvantaged. 
The above passages warn against pride, arrogance, and oppression, contrary to the virtues of the, of the saints like Titus, Theodora, Ephemios, and Odysseus that we read about in our opening. The saints exemplify humility, faithfulness, and compassion, standing as beacons of righteousness amidst a world that was prone to what sin and injustice. Their lives remind us of the importance of obedience to God's commands, humility and service, and seeking justice and mercy for all, reflecting God's character and our own actions. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 17. This is 5 through 8. It's kind of a parallel. And it says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert, and he shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, and the salt land which is not inhabited. Blessed is the man who trusts the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when he comes, but his leaf will be green, and will not be agnostic in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Name the Father. Son, and the Holy Spirit. So here, in this passage, Jeremiah is echoing the themes of trusting in God versus relying on human strength. It's similar to the warnings and consequences outlined by the prophet Isaiah, we just read this morning. Regarding Isaiah's, regarding Israel's pride and arrogance, it contrasts the outcomes of trusting in God with the blessings of prosperity and resilience. Just as Isaiah highlights the consequences of disobedience and the benefits of obedience to God's commands. Beautiful. Genesis chapter 7, verses 1 through 5. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord said to Noah, come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and his female. Two of each animal that are unclean, a male and his female. Also seven each of birds of the air male and female, to keep the species alive on the face of all earth. For after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. And Noah did according to all the Lord commanded him. Name the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Salvation is a two-way street before man and God. Look how it starts out. Then the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark. You and all your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. So salvation is a two-way street before man and God. Right? If man is loyal to God, God blesses man. Right? Be righteous. Be righteous in the world full of sin. So here the passage describes God's command to Noah to enter the ark of his family before the floodwaters come. It teaches obedience to what God's instructions, trust in his protection and the importance of righteous, righteousness amidst what's a simple world. Right? A lot of similarities between Noah's world and our world today. Right? The obedience and faithfulness of Noah in building and entering the ark parallel the saints' commitment to following God's will, even in their challenging circumstances. Just as Noah obeyed God's command to enter the ark for safety, the saints exemplified obedience and faithfulness to God's calling in their own lives just like we should. They trusted God's protection and guidance, even when facing persecution, trials, torture, and death. Their lives remind us of the importance of unwavering faith, obedience to God's command, and trust in his providence, even in the face of, even in the face of adversity and challenges. Just like the saints and Noah, right? They were loyal to God. We have a parallel. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7, right? And it says, by faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. The passage here in Hebrews highlights Noah's faith and obedience to God's instruction to build the ark and prepare for the flood. Similar to the accounts, similar to the accounts in Genesis. It improvises Noah's trust in God's warning and his actions based on that faith, which led to God's acknowledgement of his family, salvation, and righteousness, just as we saw in the lives of the saints we read about. Our last reading this morning come out of Proverbs chapter 8, starting in verse 32, 
will end in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 11. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it says, Now, therefore, listen to me, my children. For blessed are those who keep my ways. Here is instruction. Hear instruction and be wise. And do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. Whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul, and all of those who hate me love death. The way of wisdom, Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out of seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places of the city, whoever is simple, let him turn. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, come eat of my bread and drink of, of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. He who, he who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself. And he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. Do not correct a scoffer lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man, he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, he will be still, and he will be still wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be multiplied, and the years of life will be added to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. So here in our reading of Proverbs 8 and 9, the passage was portraying wisdom personified, calling a man to listen and receive instruction. It also emphasizes the value of wisdom, the benefits of heeding its counsel, and the contrast between wisdom and folly. Right? The call to listen to wisdom's instruction parallels the saints' commitment to seeking divine wisdom and guidance. Beautiful. The saints, our saints this morning, exemplified the pursuit of divine wisdom, seeking God's guidance and understanding in their actions and decisions. Just as the passage highlights the blessings and benefits of following wisdom, the saints' lives demonstrate the fruits of living according to God's wisdom, including spiritual growth, discernment, and also righteousness. Their example encourages us to prioritize seeking wisdom from God, making choices that align with his will, and living in a manner that reflects the values of wisdom and righteousness. A parallel from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24, 25, named the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will lock him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. This passage here in Matthew is emphasizing the importance of hearing and doing God's word. It's similar to the teachings in Proverbs, all about listening to wisdom's instruction, embracing understanding. It contrasts the outcomes of wise and foolish choices, just as Proverbs contrasts the way of wisdom with the way of folly and its consequences. In conclusion this morning. So in conclusion, the lives of St. Titus, St. Theodora, and St. Ephemius and Odysseus, alongside the profound teachings from Isaiah, Genesis, and Proverbs, echo a timeless message of faith, wisdom, and martyrdom. Their unwavering commitment to God's will, obedience in the face of adversity, and pursuit of divine wisdom inspires all believers. May we learn from their example to embrace humility, trust God's providence, and seek wisdom in every aspect of our own lives. Let us stand firm in our faith, even amid challenges, knowing that through obedience and reliance on God, we can overcome obstacles and shine as a light in the world seeking truth and righteousness. As we reflect on their legacy, and the timeless truths of scripture. May our hearts be stirred to walk in the footsteps of these saints, living lives that honor God, embody wisdom, and testify the transformative power of faith in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's where we'll end this morning. We'll get to our blessing, our prayer. Thank you all again. Hope you enjoyed the study. All right, back. Get ready for our blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever.
the sages. Amen. Oh, Lord God, you've spoken us your divine seeming words. You illuminate the souls of sinners to comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply as hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith, having a blameless life and conduct without approaching Christ. Oh, Lord, you are a light and to you will you glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Yours is the kingdom, the power, glory, Father, Son, and the Spirit, now and forever. The sages. Amen. We depart in peace. In the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom. Shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us. And those who hate us keep asking keep seeking keep knocking because christ is truly in our midst i love you all so much good morning